Okay, so I thought I'd talk about Raspberry Pis and HDMI connections because I've got a little bit of an issue at the moment with uh, micro HDMI, but I'm not sure if this is more to do with the cable or to do with the casing, but we'll come to that in a minute. So originally we had full-size HDMIs, so this is an original Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is one from China, and as you can see, we had the full-size SD card, we had uh, video output, audio output, as well as the HDMI and a display and a camera connection. And there was plenty of room, uh, even when we had the more USB connections on it like this one. The Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, because uh, I haven't got anything in between these Pis, uh, this has got full size HDMI, micro USB for power, which I've never liked, but we've obviously moved away from that now. Uh, we had the headphone jack, but we also got the bigger GPIO pin. So there wasn't loads of space to put two displays, but when we got a Raspberry Pi 4B with the extra power, they could give us two displays. When you look at the board, there really isn't a lot of room on here. So we've got display connection, camera connection, we've got the two HDMIs, USB-C for power, we've got the analog connection for audio and video, and we've also got the power over ethernet there as well. So there really isn't a lot of room to put two full-size HDMIs, and dual display is very useful and works really well on a Pi 4B and beyond. And when you get to the Pi 5, there's even less room really, so two micro HDMI outputs, USB-C, these are display and camera connections, PCIe for faster storage, we've got the fan connector, we've got the power over ethernet, so we really don't have a lot of room. So I can see why we still use micro HDMI. And actually, I don't really have a problem with them. So these cables, I think I've had, had one of these go down in my time of using Raspberry Pis, which is many years, um, but this connector works fine and it gives me a full size HDMI. And that's what I tend to use very versatile, and because I switch between devices that have full-size HDMI and micro, yeah, it's ideal cable for me. Uh, I also have one of these, which is a short cable, I can't remember where I got this, full-size HDMI to micro, and that works absolutely fine as well. But when I do get a problem, is when cases use a outer to them. So if the connections aren't protruding, then I do find with this EDETECT case, actually it's not as good a connection and I have to push it in and if I knock the cable, I lose video. I've also had that same problem more recently with this Raspberry Pi 500 Plus. Now, I don't think it's the Raspberry Pi 500 Plus at all. When we look at the connections, they are slightly embedded. Uh, and so it was working fine, but if I go anywhere near the cable, I lose video and then I have to just push it in a bit more or unplug it and plug it back in again. But I did notice when I was doing the video for this one, I did a tear down, the back of the board, uh, this side, wasn't pushed down all the way. Now this is a pre-production release, so I had this a couple of weeks before they came out. So it could be to do with that, I'm sure it's, well, I haven't heard of anybody else saying it about Raspberry Pi 500 Pluses, but I've definitely had it on quite a few cases over the years, and I've always kind of thought, well, it must just be my cable. But now I've got it on this as well, I thought I'd kind of investigate, and also just sort of get people to say what their experience with, is with HDMIs and micro HDMIs and adapters and so on in the comments, because I'd be interested to hear about it. So I also have a mini HDMI, which I actually really like, uh, and I wonder if we could have two of these. Uh, I know there's not a lot of space on the board, but two of these, maybe, well, I don't know, if you if you stack them, I mean, if we've got this sort of height, would that work? Possibly. But then these cables are quite thick, so you'd have to get that stack quite high. That probably wouldn't go, would it? Look, if you look how thick that is, maybe then you would have to have sort of low profile cables, which do exist, but yeah, it can be a bit of a pain. What's this one like? So this one is a full-size HDMI to mini, and but it's straight rather than this one being tapered, but then obviously this needs to be tapered because it's going to full size. So the mini HDMI is used on the Zero 02W. We've got a couple of micro USBs and we've got this mini HDMI, and if I put it next to a full size HDMI, there you can see how much difference there is in size. I really like Mini as a connection. I don't think I've ever had a problem with Mini as a connection. I think it's great. And it just is like 
at a normal HDMI, just a bit smaller, whereas the micro is just a bit more fiddly. But I get it, it's, uh, it's a tiny connection, so it's very useful for something like Raspberry Pi, where they're working to keep it this same size. Obviously, as I said in my first video, there's more room on a Pi 500 Plus, so I would have rather if they'd have fitted it in there somehow. But it is using the same board as the Pi 500. I was gonna say about this case as well. So this is a compute module four in here, which terminates with full size HDMIs, but the HDMIs are lovely and flush. So there is no chance that the case is gonna mean, well, and even, so that's with the HDMI plugged in. Look how much leeway I've got as well. Whereas when I plug these in, they are literally all the way in. Uh, so the plastic is touching, but it doesn't feel that solid a connection. It certainly doesn't feel as solid as that. That really does, it just goes in that little tiny, tiny bit more. So let's have a look inside this Pi 500 Plus. Let's make sure the board is seated down flat, because I'm sure that'll be the problem. All right, so really respect this keyboard cable, it's, it's excellent. Oh, and usually I take it off that side. So I really like that this is just two screws to take this out. There we go, so that's the heat spreader off, and I think this just lifts off. I didn't bother to take the board out because I'd already done it with a Pi 500 video a while ago. So, yeah, this bit was the bit. Can you see that it's up? I don't know if that would be what was making the difference though. So, if I pull the plastic bit back, oh crikey, that's tight. Maybe I have to unseat it this end. I'm sure the old Pi 500 wasn't in as tight as this. I really feel I'm going to break it. Uh, it's got to be that though, it's got to be that that pushes out. I wonder if that going down would... Oh, okay, that's right, that's gone down in there. I think that's flat. Yeah, that is flat now. So... How close? It still seems to be sunk in, but it's whether or not it would go all the way out because I haven't got another one to compare it with. It's tricky to know. Then the USB A's are fine. But also, would that is that normally flush for other people? So let me know in the comments if yours is flush. As I say, I have to stress this was this was sent to me uh, for a review before they came out. So it's an early ah. There we go. I think it was because that was raised that it was making it really hard to get it out. Ah, there we go. Right, okay. So, is that enough for it to... Okay, now we're moving. Right, so the board is out. There's a look on the bottom of it because I didn't show that before. If I pop my micro connector in, That feels tight compared to, it feels tighter in my Pi 5 and my Pi 4. I don't know, that feels about the same. But obviously this is very new. So how, there's that much gap. And these, they do stick out a little bit. So if we do that, they are sticking out beyond the board and the thickness of this is probably about the same. So I wonder if it just wasn't going all the way back in. Right, let's try and seat it. Yeah, that goes in nicely. <laughs> Why is that tight? Push it in more. Okay, I don't like the sounds of that and that is up again, but that goes down fine now. So, I guess these bits are pushing it, these little tiny bits here are pushing it that way. So how much space? Yeah, see there's a little gap under mine, under the HDMIs. I wonder if they're sitting down quite enough. Because it was out initially, that could have meant that it wasn't seated fully. I'm going, I'm going to take it out again 
and try and reseat it again. Because I think the key will be getting those micro HDMIs to go through the hole better. I think that's closer. <laughs> I don't know. Is that closer or not? Hard to tell. The test will be to plug it in and try it. Well, that feels better. And pop this back in place. So I'm not sure if that's it, but if I touch this cable, it doesn't seem to be struggling anymore. Whereas before, what I would do is eject my SD card from my screen capture device and the screen would go off. And I think that's fixed it. The other fix I was thinking about if that hadn't worked was to see how much I could shave down this part uh, to reveal more of this, which I think would be just more reliable for me in the future with other cases and things that I get, because these, they just don't seem to be long enough. I've got another one here of the full size to HDMI, which I use. So I think I'm gonna cut that down and see how far I can get it without revealing any of the metal bits. So I've been chopping away at it and I've removed quite a few little bits. You can see it here. I think what I'm gonna do now is file down the rest though. Cause I think cutting into it, I'm gonna get metal at some point. While I'm doing this, if you have a cable which seems to have a longer end, let me know in the comments. Maybe someone has designed one that has a bit more tolerance. Oh, it's still all plastic. Haven't revealed any metal. I'll probably get it down to a point and then it will just pop out. <laughs> It'll probably be just the end that's holding it in. Right, I think that's looking pretty good. It's definitely revealed some more of the plug. A little bit more. Right, so quite a bit has been taken off. I'm gonna try this one now. Yeah, that's the one, that's much better now. So I've been shaking this around and I can't get it to turn off. And if we have a look close up, you can see that when it's plugged in, the plastic isn't touching. So there's a gap there now. So you can see a bit of the metal. Whereas if I plug in the other one that's here, so when it's all the way in, the plastic stops it. And you can see that it is slightly further in by the ends of the cables here. And that is making, well, it was working already, but that will make the extra difference on some of those cases. Oh, please with that. And if I unplug it, just to show you that I didn't reveal any metal, there's still plastic, so it's nice and safe. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.